Um, so uh, I want to talk about a lot of stuff. We don't have a ton of time, but I want it since we're in an educational yeah. institution. I want to mm -hmm. know a little bit about. I know a little bit about what you did and what you studied, but if you could, because I did a little research, but mm -hmm. maybe not, not everybody else did. Uh, like what? What did you study? How was that educational experience as far as getting you interested in design, animation, yeah. typography, whatever? For sure. Um, I studied a BFA at a, in, in, in Brisbane. In what? A major in animation. animation. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and I started out with the thought of wanting to become an animator, but there were like graphic design things that I was really interested in. So there was a point in my um, studies where I needed to make a decision whether I wanted to concentrate on graphic design or animation. There was like things I liked about both, mm -hmm. but like not the whole thing, because mm -hmm. I felt like design lacked that technical aspect that I really enjoyed, but then parts of animation I felt was like really, really tedious, and I didn't really enjoy character animation mm -hmm. until I had this one subject uh, in my like first year that was motion design, which was like the class motion, the, a class on motion design. I had never heard about it before. This was my introduction, and it literally had like all the things I loved about design and loved about animation together. Cool. Yeah. So it took was, one class. It took one class, and I was like, well, this is it because it fits all the things that I wanted to concentrate on. So I, I'm a bit disappointed that that was only one class because like, the rest of my... That seems to be all you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the rest of my studies were like, you know, character rigging and a lot of like, game stuff. Um, I also noticed that you mi you minored in like music and sound, is that correct? I did, yeah. It was mainly what because did I did uh, a lot of electives on communication design. So I took a lot of courses on like web design and like digital, which I think like influenced a lot of my process now. Cool. So another thing, I love the way your title sequences, it, almost always the type, it moves, it's animated. Um, I'm assuming you didn't have a lot of like typographic training, maybe a little bit in this motion graphics class, but like for somebody that d doesn't have a, you know, the typical design education and background, like what got you interested in type and like how did you learn how to use it? Did it just happen? Or like, what got you interested in letters? Because it's a yeah. very like specific kind of nerdy thing to totally. be into letters. And, totally. And then, and then I guess after that, like, when did you decide like I want to make these move? Because yeah. that's a new thing. You yeah. know, like it's that's a new motion graphics has been around, but like as far as like seeing type in motion, it's really just the last like you know twenty yeah. years. Yeah, I, I've never like set out to be like, oh, this is my interest. It could kind of like evolve very organically. Mm -hmm. And I always treat type as, you know, not an afterthought. And it's always very included in the very early concepting mm -hmm. uh, stages. So I pretty much like find, I, I, know, I rate type like as important as like color and like contrast, sure. yeah, yeah. you know? So that's probably why a lot of my work involves a lot of type because I know that that's like a really powerful thing to include in my um, my work, mm -hmm. um, and it's also a way to tell a story as well and like weave in some of the um, visuals into the type. Mm -hmm. um, what about like choosing typefaces? Because I've noticed like in, maybe in like Like Minds and Analog Digital, it's more of a recognizable typeface, mm -hmm. but with the Expanse. And definitely with semi-permanent, it's like a whole new customized typeface. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you're involved in creating? Um, and what? How did? You, is that something you made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Expanse, it was something that we made. Like we, I knew that I wanted the type to actually speak to the genre, mm -hmm. and like be an extension of the narrative. Um, and in semi-permanent, I wanted to. My main focus was to not use tiny white type. Sure. In title yeah. sequences, it's huge and it's it's great. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. I yeah. wanted to make it like almost like a character. It is in, yeah. in the I mean, sequence. It feels more like a design element with with everything, and it, there's a lot going on in that sequence. Um, I guess since we're on that topic, um, I'm kind of interested in. That's a big project. It seemed like you were working with how many different animators? Ten other people. Ten other yeah. people. Um, and I read like for me, it's it's very scientific. Like it ha it reminds me of uh, Jean Painlevy's like surreal scientific films that would like concentrate on like 
magnifying crystals, and then that's all it would be, but there'd be music to it, and then also like psychedelic, it's very psychedelic, um, and I read that it's, it's uh, influenced by a, a zoologist, right, named yeah, Ernst yeah. Haeckel, and yeah. he was, he did, biologist, yeah. biologist yeah. and he did medical illustrations, is that what it was? He, he did a lot of research into like he was a scientist and an illustrator, which I felt like was like a really awesome overlap yeah, of like sure. um, occupations. So I was really drawn to his work because it was grounded in a lot of like scientific research, but then he made these like beautiful illustrations. So yeah, I was felt really inspired by it. So then how did you go from, you know, I'm okay, I'm gonna focus on, because the restraint, you talking about restraints is key yeah. and I, and, it, I don't think it just pertains to like motion graphics. It's any kind of animation or any kind of creative work. Um, how did you go from, okay, I'm, and I'm inspired by the work of this artist to actually creating those images that are so abstract and like yeah. so beautiful, but the, just, and there's so much going on. Like I can't, I can't, I sometimes can't tell what's 2D, what's 3D and what's live action. Some of it seems very organic, but it's mixed together and edited in, in great, you know, in this really smooth way. So can you remember like how you got to that process and then how you were able to like communicate that to 10 people that I'm assuming you weren't <laughs> in the same city or yeah, even in the same room, remotely, you know, yeah. Um, all through Slack. So thank you Slack for doing that that's a good, and Dropbox. That's a good app. Yeah, that was a good sponsor. <laughs> um, yeah, it was actually the hardest thing, uh, the hardest part of the like all of the um, process into actually making the titles was to actually come up with the direction. Um, because I think the hardest part for this direction was it had to be, you know, open enough for other collaborators to work on their bits, mm -hmm. but then provide enough direction that it still, still felt like a one piece. Because I, as a director, really wanted it to feel cohesive, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to take the you know exquisite corpse route where you just have to cut different styles together. Sure. Um, no, it's so that, very cohesive. Yeah. So that was my main focus, just mm -hmm. to make a cohesive thing. And so I was like really, um, it took a lot of work to actually come up with the direction itself. And what really helped was sitting down with the conference founder, Mori, mm -hmm. who he you know he kind of explained because the titles speak to the theme of last year, which is creative tension. Okay. And he kind of went through and just talked about what creative tension meant to him. And he explained three aspects, basically. A pushing and pulling, which is basically when ideas start forming, you know, you're kind of pulled in different mm -hmm. directions with different ideas. And then the second part was friction, uh, when like you have an idea, but you might uh, have to overcome some obstacles sure. to like make come into fruition. Mm -hmm. And the third part was release, which was basically, you know, you've produced something and you want to let everyone else see and like let it free in the world. Yeah. Um, so that really became the three arcs of the titles. And once I found Ernest Haeckel's work, um, I thought about how, you know, microorganisms could be a visual metaphor for those three acts. So um, in the titles, I tried to animate you know a light a lifespan of a of a microorganism from like birth to when it gets when it dies when it gets released into the world so, so that, even in a, like a very abstract piece there's a there you're saying like there's a narrative essentially yes. right even yeah. though it's it's you're it's becoming abstracted For sure. visually yeah. um you're yeah. following some sort of literally a three-act structure yeah, yeah. For, and I, I wrote this narrative and I put together like a treatment with like heaps and heaps of references and um, you know, I talked to each collaborator and... And did you have to pitch that idea to some, did they, were they like, just do whatever, Joyce, you're great, or were you like, no, here's what it no, is? No, I actually they had, had to, to pitch it. it this time. So it's like a real client it, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, because this was like sponsored by Dropbox right. and it had to like, you know, There's be suited. Involved. Yeah, <laughs> be suited to, you know, the semi permanent um, mm -hmm. crowd and obviously Murray had some ideas as well, so he was like an actual client. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, I'm just curious about one more thing about uh, analog digital is how did you how did you get in contact I'm assuming with Patrick Claire or somebody at Elastic that was doing True Detective because I've always seen those ones and I'm like wow this looks exactly like True <laughs> Detective like did they and it came it was before that right yeah yeah Where, I'm just curious and maybe some other people are too like did they already have that concept and then did they come to you and be like 
how did you do this? Or like, how exactly did that happen? It's actually like a, I would consider analog digital to be like one of my bricks in my career, yeah. just cause like I, like we did this for fun basically. Mm -hmm. It was like a pro bono titles right. um, for a local conference. Mm -hmm. And we thought we did something cool, but when we released it online, we didn't really expect so much publicity from mm -hmm. it. So we were really surprised. And I don't know if you know about Patrick, but he's actually from Brisbane as well. I knew he was Australian, but I yeah. didn't know he was from yeah. Brisbane. Yeah, so he grew up where I grew up, which was really cool. cool. Yeah. So um, around that, I think it was literally like the right place, right time with the right project. Um, and around the time that, you know, Analog Digital kind of got picked up around a lot of blogs, he was pitching for True Detective. And that was his first... Um, job with Elastic as one of their new directors. directors yeah. um, so when he won the pitch, having to having already saw this piece that was uh, popular online that had a similar execution and a team from Brisbane, mm -hmm. I think all those three things kind of like aligned and he you know, sent an email to us and was like, do you want to work on this? Which is a pretty crazy So thing. as a studio breed, uh, breeder, the studio you were yeah. working for in Brisbane, you guys all worked on that together? Yeah, cool. yeah. So we, we, for that job, we only did like compositing and mm -hmm. like a bit of like animation for a few shots. So we didn't do most of it, but we definitely did just help out. Cool, yeah. cool. Uh, I got a question about I mean, you know, uh, you mentioned your sound designer, but uh, it's really mu music, right? Like, how do you, I, I'm assuming that you value music because the, the pieces where I can tell that you worked with your composer, your sound designer, uh, it's very em emotional to me, I guess, but like it, it really complements the designs and the animation. And I was wondering like, how involved are you with Especially when you're working just like a team of two, I'm assuming obviously you guys are communicating, yeah. but like, do you give notes about like, I want the music to do this or that? Um, and how specific are you about that? I, I have no musical bone in my body. <laughs> and like you can't play an instrument, I can't but, play you, an but instrument. you listen to yeah, it. Yeah, 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 totally. So what I try to do is I, I put a lot of trust in the people who do my music because I, I'm not an expert in mm -hmm. music whatsoever, but I start, I try to give really like specific direction as, as much as possible, like reference tracks mm -hmm. and like what I like and how I want the music to build from like the beginning to the end. And I explain like the narrative and like, you know, where I want the, the crescendo or like mm -hmm. the climax to be. But then like specifically, I specifically it'll be like, I want it. Yeah. At this, here. this stage. And I give it like a broad, like I want it from like two minutes or something. Um, but then after that, I let, I pretty much trust in there. And what stage? Oh, what stage are you in? Are you in pre-production? Are you boarding still? Yeah. When this yeah. is taught, so you, you're boarding, and your composer yeah. is getting notes from you and sending you, and you're sending him references and. Yeah. Back so and I forth. try to get like music as early as possible in in the projects that I direct. Yeah. For sure. Because Sometimes you don't, you can't control it. Like yeah. at the expanse, I'm assuming. Exactly. That like, was we're going to score that this. Was yeah. End. yeah. 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 Um, but it's so it, it's it's almost an opposite process because it's interesting. Like the motion graphics classes I teach, we have projects where it's like choose the music first, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this isn't really how it works in the industry, yeah. but. Um, it is sometimes, you know, like you're yeah. a perfect example yeah. of that. And I think you do know a lot about music. It's just that as much as a director should know, mm -hmm. and a lot of directors, I don't think they're not musicians themselves, but to understand like, this is where the crescendo goes exactly, is understanding music, I think, to me at least. And um, how, so how, how does the syncopation come together? Because like minds and, and all of those, the editing, it's like so tight with the music, even like there's a lot of reverb in those tracks, mm -hmm. like and like space in some of the music as well. Um, yeah, I guess like. I think it really helps to get the music really early, as early as you can get so it. Like, even if it like is a draft and it's right. like the beats per minute, like I know the pacing you know the of tempo. it. Yeah. yeah. So it happens very in tandem almost, like a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, yeah. Like I would get a draft from the, my composer and I'll be like, oh, that's a really cool snare hit. Mm -hmm. I need to put something there. And then he would see some of my visuals and be like, oh, you've done something really cool with like, you know, a really slow thing that you've animated out. Maybe I should put a bit of breather there. So mm -hmm. it's like a very like, yeah, a very like a relationship basically. Is this something unique that you've only really experienced when you're doing these like smaller projects? Or is this something that's like not super common in studio world? I think it isn't very common in yeah. studio world. Like the norm is to 
do your visuals and then someone, and then someone will someone add a track it. Yeah. to the... And there's no interaction. Cause, yeah. Um, I think it's better when you can, even with reference tracks, like, because there's such a tight, like, uh, connection between sound and graphics and motion graphics. Yeah. Um, Let's see, uh, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to know if you could expand a little bit more on some challenges you've maybe faced being a woman in an industry that's predominantly yeah. male, right? Yeah. And yeah. even like, uh, like we teach a title design class here and we go through the history and it's like, it's just all men up until Elaine Bass and like Nina Saxon. Mm -hmm. and, the, and it's only been like in the last 20 years or so that you see a lot more women as art directors uh, in titles and motion graphics, but what are some like, I know, what are some challenges and then how did you use that as your asset? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest challenge for me was just building up my confidence and like realizing that, you know, my ideas and my opinions matter, mm -hmm. even if I'm like the only woman in the team. Um, and it, it does feel really daunting when you walk into a meeting and you're like surrounded by men. Um, so yeah, it took a lot of like experience and like practice mm -hmm. really to be like, you know, it doesn't matter that I'm a woman, I still have great ideas mm -hmm. and you, you should listen to me basically. Sure, of course. Yeah. Um, what about, can you talk a little bit about like the, how you got into art direction? Um, like I'm assuming you didn't just go right into art directing like, um, how, how did you get into that, and how do you balance the like being an animator, a designer, and then an art director? Yeah, yeah. so I like started as an animator, um, actually like a junior designer at a like a web uh, agency, mm -hmm. and for a number of years I did the animation, I did like motion design, but be, I think because the team that I was working on was so small, I had to do a lot of other things, um, so I became like more of a generalist. Mm -hmm. And through like just working through like working with different people on different projects and trying out a whole bunch of stuff, I realized that I actually really enjoyed the design process mm -hmm. of the whole production uh, more than actually animating. So it took a number of years to kind of like just, I think I just said more yes, yes to more of the jobs that allowed me to design more mm -hmm. than I did to animation. And I slowly made that transition across. Um, until yeah, like now I guess. But now you, but like you've done animation, you've done design, yeah. so you, it's part of being a director is understanding all those roles. And what about just being able to work with other people and like keep them motivated, or just what are some things you've learned or like taken away from some of these projects where you were leading? Uh, yeah, I, I would say like the biggest lesson I have, I've learned from being a director or art director is just having trust in your team. And, um, you know, as a director, you can't do everything. Like, the reason why you're a director is you have to oversee and, like, manage people and, like, you know, um, give feedback in the way that will lead to the project to the way you envisioned. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is just pace placing a lot of trust in the t team members that you have and knowing that, you know, everyone's here to do the best work that they can do. And sometimes, you know, the job doesn't totally pan out the way you envision, right. but you know, there's lessons to be learned from that. And every time is a, is a way to grow and learn more. Really, um, I think we have maybe time for one more of my questions and then we can take some questions from the audience if people are interested. Um, but I'm kind of curious about, uh, let's see, what should we? So can you talk a little bit about your new gig, when you leave here, you're going to New York and you're going to do six weeks straight <laughs> on a TV show as an art director on a TV show that you've never done that before, yeah, right? Yeah. And and it's a TV show, if you guys have seen, I'm, I'm sure people are familiar with like The Daily Show and John Oliver, this is like that times 100. It's like, there's no desk, it's just Hassan Minaj and the screens all over the place and the type moves, right? So I'm sure you're excited for this, but it seems like, do you think that you have enough skills going into it or like that you've learned doing titles and other things, or is this gonna be a whole new experience for you? I, I'm really excited mainly because I, I, I wanna learn, right. because I have never done TV before and it seems like a really great skill to have. Um, and I was really excited to be able to um, be in a position where I could work with the writers, you know, to direct the, the look and like the design as well as like facilitate 
um, like a really important, like Hassan mainly does news stories on that, on things that are really important. Right. So that, I felt that like, were like happening that yeah, way. yeah, yeah. So I felt like it was a really great use of my skills to like lend itself to a, a bigger picture rather than like doing ads all the time. Totally. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I'm, it's going to be a lot of work for sure, but I feel like the amount of new things that I will get to learn will like make it all worthwhile. So uh, now we can open it up for Q&A if anybody out there is interested. The microphone's over there. I think I can't see anything, but somebody's going up there. Hi. How's it going? Hi. Uh, in your one project, uh, we had the ink blots and uh, your yellow text. Uh, yep. There was this one part where you had three different names come in with a bar. The question is, do you start uh, and then work backwards from the word and then move it backwards and reverse it and then put it into the piece? Or how do you? Uh, As in like the, the, the order of like type and visuals? Yeah, exactly. Because oh, yeah. I, I saw it came in and it, I couldn't read it and then I could read it. How do you go about starting that? As in like the order of like where to put the, the type or the actual animation? I think no, like animating it and like when it becomes legible. Oh, sure, maybe. sure, sure, okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, the type for Semi Permanent was done by a team up in Toronto called Worship. They're like super, super talented. And they, they really nailed the balance of like making type the focus while not taking away from the visuals. So it's really like hats off to them for like achieving that. Um, I only gave them really broad direction. Like this is going to be bold type and here are where the names are, but you go make it. So I, I don't know if that answers your question. No, yeah, I guess I misunderstood. I thought you had some part in actually making it, but you just directed it. Not for the type. No, I was the director. OK, yeah. cool. I'll get to someone else. But look up worship for sure. <laughs> Hi. So I know graphics are very like client-based, and uh, you don't usually get like that much creative freedom. How do you, or like, do you have any advice for finding meaning and fulfillment in your work? Meaning and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's always going to be a balance. Like, there are definitely going to be times where you do client work and you're not t terribly psyched about where it's going. Um, I don't. I think it's unrealistic to expect like all your client work to be like fulfilling, but it's finding that balance between the work that you know pays the bills, that you know might get your name out there or like try a new technique versus the work that you can put your heart and soul into. Um, so yeah, it's a really b fine line, but like hopefully, you know, you find it. I know I'm still trying to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about like doing, uh, saying yes to like things like analog digital, where it was like you did have more creative freedom, you didn't get any money for yeah. it, but it led to great things. For you know? sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like that's kind of like very common in creative um, industry mm -hmm. where the fun jobs don't uh, get don't get paid, paid yeah. much. But if you do them and you get them out there, exactly, that will always lead to right. paying jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, I love your title sequences, by the way. Oh, thank you. But I was just going to ask, so you put up a quote, something about um, no project like make or breaks, makes or breaks your career, yep. and like it's never really hanging in the balance. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering, so you work a lot in title sequences. Um, are there still other mediums that you want to explore and like other places you or media industries you want to work in? Or do you feel yourself like getting more comfortable, like you want to stay where you are? No, I definitely don't want to stay where I am. I. I really want to get into more interactive work. I feel like a lot of motion is heading into that direction. And I would really love to see, you know, interactive work be brought into like stage visuals and like concerts. So hopefully I get to work on something like that in the future. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Hey. Um, first of all, thank you for coming out and sharing your thoughts on like 
uh, anxiety and like all that stuff, I feel it's like such an important conversation that we don't like often hear. Yeah. So I was pretty glad that you tackled that. But I was hoping to ask you what keeps you mo motivated as like an animator and designer to wake up every day and like bump out work. I think it's my like drive to just keep learning. Like I. I just want to try new things and like try a new technique or you know I see something out in the real world that I want to bring to life in animation so it's that yeah just wanting to keep being the best designer that I could be on a personal level like makes me want to keep going. Thank you. Hey um, so I know you kind of talked about this, uh, the process of like becoming a director and art director and everything like that was just kind of like taking more jobs that you're like, I think this is what I kind of want to keep going. But was there like one inflection point in that process that you're like, this is the job that like, or the team that I worked with, or I don't know, is it somebody that was with you that like kind of was like, hey, no, you got a knack for this or something to like push into directing because like, that's a big, that's a big step, yeah, and you do yeah. it well, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, yeah, as I mentioned, I think Analog Digital was definitely one of those projects where that was uh, you know, my first title sequence as well. Um, and being able to work on that as the lead, I enjoyed so many different aspects of it that like kind of flicked a switch in my mind. It was like, oh, this, is, this must be the thing that I want to pursue. Yeah, so that would be one of the one of the big projects, and then of course that led to like True Detective, and I learned so much from that. So, yeah. Nice. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I think that's it. Yeah. So thank you guys for being here, and thank you so much, Joyce, for coming.